welcome you to our Easter festival worship. Please stand. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our life, and our salvation. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, O living one, for you have created all and you water the earth abundantly. Oceans and aquifers praise you. For our priests, lakes, saloons, ponds, rivers, and springs, and hallelujah to you. That fish fast, that men know, the Lord's are real, clear, fisher, glass, gives, kashna, mesa, yoga, guanas, marsh, otter, palmer bark, rock, saunders, heaven's well, sugar, sorcerers, grasser, turtle, and yamar. All I can sing by you are sources. We praise you.
Again, we give thanks for your presence as our resurrection witnesses and reuniting with us, excuse me, at First Lutheran. We particularly would like to extend a special welcome to anyone worshiping for the first time with us. Expect to be warmly greeted by those whom you are seated with. And we'd like to uh, extend our gratitude to all of you for the Easter garden. We uh, uh, give thanks for you and those whom you have provided all of the uh, flowers and decorations in honor and in memory of your uh, loved ones. Not too late to get a streamer to uh, shake with Alleluia. Some of us need movement, so this is what we're gonna help you with, uh, especially for our young ones. Uh, again, um, if you're missing a screen, it's scheduled, or ske we are scheduling it for repair, so we, sorry, we're sorry not to have that hospitality for you at our festival worship. Uh, last uh, words of welcome, no, two more. Let's uh, give a extended acclaim to our choirs, chancel, handbell, and all of our supporting musicians and directors. And if you would, uh, hopefully we didn't run out, uh, there's something called the Easter Flower Book that should be in your bulletin. And if you would find that and turn it to the poem, poem on the last page of the uh, Easter Flower Book, and just have that ready for me to call on you with it again. So just, just have that poem ready if you would, please. I think that completes, at this moment, uh, words of welcome to you, but again, it's a, a privilege and a pleasure to have you gather. Let us turn our hearts and minds to the reading of God's Word. Good morning. Good morning. First reading this Easter Sunday comes from Acts chapter 10. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message that he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life.
This morning's second reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all shall be made alive in Christ. But each in his own order. Christ, the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom of God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Word of God, word of life. Suddenly, two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. The men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here. He has risen. So the women hurried away from the tomb and ran to tell Jesus' disciples. <laughs> Oh, 
get it. If it's Roman guards here to kill us, don't let them in. I'll try to remember that. Boy, he must think I'm as dense as a rat. Who is it? It's me, Mary Magdalene. Peter, let me in. Mary? Hold on a minute. Boy, that door was really locked. Yeah, it's solid all right. We don't want to take any chances. Ever since the Romans crucified Jesus, all of us disciples have been a little edgy. Peter, is it Roman soldiers here to kill us? Relax, John. It's just Mary Magdalene. No soldiers. Hi, Mary. Hello, Mary. Hi, Mary. How's it going, Mary? Thanks for coming by. Did she bring sandwiches or anything? I'm hungry. You're so out of breath. Where have you been? Out at the cemetery. We went to visit Jesus' grave. Are you sure that's smart? What if you were followed? That doesn't matter. Peter, he's not there. Jesus isn't there. What do you mean? He's risen. He's risen from the dead. What do you mean? I mean just what I said. Jesus has risen from the dead. What's she saying? Jesus was a friend of Fred? Who's Fred? Is he a Roman soldier come to get us? John, no soldiers. It's okay. Just checking. I was with Mary, Jesus' mother. We went to the tomb, and the stone was rolled away from the entrance. Someone took Jesus' body? That's what we thought at first. But there were angels, and they told us Jesus has risen from the dead. He's alive, Peter. Jesus is alive. What does Mary want? She's come from Jesus' tomb. And she says, Jesus isn't there. He's risen from the dead. What, is she nuts? Yeah, she's just excited. Of course he's there. The Romans killed him. Romans? There are Romans here to kill us? John, get out from under the table. There are no Romans here. Repeat, no Romans. John gets so scared. If you don't believe me, go see for yourself. I'm telling you, Jesus has risen from the dead, just like the angels told me. Well, I guess it couldn't hurt to look. If it's true, it changes everything. Peter, I just met Jesus. It's true, because Jesus changes everything. Guys, I'm going to go check this out. Who's coming with me? I am, and I'll have you know that I am not scared. In fact, I'm going first, so don't even try to keep up. John, remember to open the oh. door. That had to hurt. He'll be okay. Come on, let's go. If Jesus is alive, I want to know about it. Wow, Jesus is alive? Can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah! Wow, this is a message that is so awesome. We can share this with other people too. We've been telling this message for a long time. So children, we're gonna go back to our seats as we sing hallelujah again and get ready to share that message with other people. On this festival of our Lord's resurrection, 
Another scholar writes, in our comfortable Western first world context, we tend to see the resurrection as an epilogue, concluding the story of Jesus' life, ministry, and death. Through our ordered worship, that's why we need children, because we have to have some disorder. So through our ordered worship, and our well-rehearsed liturgical routines, even with their mistakes. We work our way right up to the empty tomb of Easter morning, only to walk away from the experience as if nothing has changed. An empty tomb means that Christ has claimed victory over the powers perpetuating violence, injustice, a world full of proscribed, dead-end possibilities, many of which keep our first world lifestyle secure, while the two-thirds will suffer under the weight of such oppression. For those of us who are less wed to the world as it is, or to the world the way it is, the good news of the resurrection of our Lord take center stage. It is not an epilogue or a conclusion. Jesus knew his death would not be the end of the story. He knew his blood would be a seed of freedom and his body a sign of hope that will soon be a reality. It's a game changer, changing the way our Lord lives among us and the way we live with each other. And we anticipated how our Lord was going to change everything. On the Transfiguration Festival of our Lord that Sunday, we buried the Alleluia with these butterfly prayers that are attached to your pew, hoping for the coming of our Lord's resurrection. Throughout the Lenten season, we heard from community members that threatened us with the coming of our Lord's resurrection by their offering to make the world less connected, less wedded to the way it is with their offering of sheltering love. <coughs> These providers of shelter for Rock County and Janesville, providing shelter for homeless high school youth, homeless men, improving the lives of students with clean clothes, household cleaners and toiletries, supporting youth aging out of foster care without family <coughs> in their homes, as well as men and women leaving unsafe homes. Each of these not-for-profit organizations in Rock County and in Janesville are still receiving our support for they have chronic budgetary needs. But here in Janesville particularly, there used to be a number of industries that express nothing measured, nothing managed. So far, those folks who addressed us during the Lenten season from those not-for-profit organizations providing sheltering love, so far in their counting, they are meeting the needs of the neediest here in these communities. But there are countless children of God throughout the world who live lives of hunger, poverty, violence, and oppression. And hopefully not all the time, but we know some of the time, our own lifestyles contribute to their suffering. Those presenters for those five nights in Lent, whom I will now refer to as resurrectionists, shared that anticipated good news of the coming risen Lord by offering how they partner with other resurrections, their clients and participants who want to change their lives anew 
especially when they are drowning in pain. And those presenters, those speakers, invited us as hearers in discovering anew how partnering with them in fulfilling emergency and ongoing needs of these citizens in Rock County may change in resurrecting ways the pain in our own lives. On this day of the festival of our Lord's resurrection, this Easter day, God has a project with us and all creation. And this project is new again. For God in Christ Jesus inhabits this earth and inhabits our very own lives with the light of heaven. One promise of the light of heaven, of the many, is what we pray for every week. Some of you might pray it every day. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Sheltering love. When we pray, we have to consider who do we leave out of us? Who do we leave out of the us sharing the life of heaven through our Lord's resurrection on earth with us now? For those who are sharing the life of heaven with us now, are the inhabitants of 1649, Gifts Men's Shelter, Craig Closet, Lutheran Social Services, Foster Care, YWCA Alternatives to Violence. Many lives throughout the globe, and including Janesville and Rock County, are lived in Good Friday, are still living in Good Friday facing the empty tunes of losses and constant disappointments, heartbreaks, failures, tragic deaths, prolonged illnesses, loneliness, and despair. The empty tune proclaimed in our Gospel of Luke is the purpose of God, though, the purpose of God fulfilled in Jesus the Christ. That same God who spoke long ago, long before, of new heavens and a new earth that we heard spoken by the lector and proclaimed by the prophet Isaiah and the Psalms. This day of our Lord's resurrection, this day of the resurrecting Lord is not about mine or your own personal life after dying. It's about everything being changed, a new creation, God's new age, a way of being that is not totally wedded to the way things are or the way they are supposed to be. It's a new way of seeing and acting that calls us continually to come to the place at the table of our Lord, to come for reconciling, healing, sharing compassionately, and threatening with justice, acts of mercy and kindness. This resurrecting power and purpose is present here now, and it was unknown to us in those resurrection speakers during Lent. On this Easter Sunday, in congregations around the globe. Me with other preachers are struggling to proclaim a new word about an ever ancient, ever new word of God, about God's yes to Jesus and God's no to the powers that killed Jesus but failed in the end. One might ask appropriately, even necessarily, how does something that happened long ago matter to me now? Matter to me today, especially with everything I'm going through here and now. 
What does all of this have to do with me, my life, and my numerous problems? Where do I fit into the picture? Earlier during our liturgy, I asked you to find the poem in your flower book. If you could turn your attention to that now. The poet, Deborah Winnegar, offers us poetical considering and answering those questions. And I ask that we speak it in unison. Thoughts of Easter by Deborah Winninger. I awoke before dawn to see a dream.
Easter faith using the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting God's promise of new life, we pray for the renewal of the church, the world, and all of creation. Alleluia. God, you are resurrecting joy to your church as we spread the message of good news, that Jesus is risen with persistent, persisting confidence. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Alleluia. God, you are creating the first fruits of new life around us, budding trees, nourishing rains, warm breezes, and freshly tilled soil by inspiring our gratitude and renewing our commitment in stewarding the earth. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Alleluia. God, you are reconciling by showing no partiality among the nations and calling all people in your way of peace by bringing an end to conflicts and divisions with advocates committed to peace, especially in Sri Lanka and Louisiana, for the victims and survivors of attacks on their congregations and their uh, hotel residences. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Hallelujah. God, you are strengthening all with hope and perseverance, especially any needing a word of life, those who are hungry, anxious, oppressed, despairing, or sick, especially our homebound and hospitalized, Danny and Mildred, and any on our minds and hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Hallelujah. God, you are life-giving for all awaiting the sacrament of holy baptism. Relethin, Dolan Schultz, Gerber, Hammer, Pedersen families, forever joined to Christ's death and resurrection. As we bear witness to this gift, renew us in faith and in action. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Hallelujah! God, you are comforting all who grieve by refreshing any with your promise of destroying death, and that with Anselm, Bishop of Canterbury, Richard Moyam, receiving Christian burial on Thursday, and all the saints, we will be made alive forever in Christ. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We commend these and all our prayers to you, O God. Come near to us with your saving help. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for the priceless grace that you have bestowed upon us through Jesus Christ, who died upon the tree of Calvary and rose again to make us living branches, drawing our life from him and bearing fruit in all the world. Send your Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth and power, to renew our faith as we receive our crucified and risen Lord, who comes to us in his body and blood. And so we remember in the night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. Then he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then after the supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray with confidence the word our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the Feast of Victory. You are all invited to partake. You may be seated. The ushers will direct you. We'll be receiving by intention, which means you'll receive a bit of bread to dip either into the wine or into the grape juice. If you prefer, there's a gluten-free station available by the pulpit side.
Please stand. And now the body and the blood of our risen Lord and Savior strengthen you and keep you in faith unto life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray together. Living God, you have greeted us in our brokenness and nourished us with the body of Christ broken for us. Risen to new life with you, send us now to bear your healing love into the wounded world. In the name of our risen Savior and Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. The blessing of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, surround and sustain you, keep you from harm, and fill you with courage. Amen. We joyfully sing hymn number 369. Go in peace. Share the good news.